Moon. The only natural satellite of Earth, also the closest cosmic object. Still the distance between Earth and Moon is far apart, that light from the Moon takes about 1.3 seconds to reach the Earth, which is approximately 384,400 kilometers. Here on Earth, the current population is 7.7 .7 billions. Many scientists think Earth has a maximum carrying capacity of 9 billion to 10 billion people. If nothing bad happens in future, we will reach this limit till 2060. So what next? What are the alternatives? Well, just look straight up. So, why the moon is a great place to start? The moon has no atmosphere and is basically a dead land. Mars definitely is a less hostile place better suited to colonization. But the moon's big advantages arise out of its proximity. The moon can be reached in a matter of days, allowing for faster development and use of fewer resources. Light takes only 1.3 seconds to reach the moon, allowing for near real-time communications and remote control of machines, which would be impossible on any other major astronomical body. The short travel time to the moon would allow for a quick emergency supply of materials or an urgent crew evacuation situation. The moon's proximity makes it a stepping stone on our journey to becoming an interplanetary species. The question is, how? In such hostile conditions, how are we ever going to make a permanent home? Let's divide the whole mission in four steps. The daytime temperatures on the lunar surface exceed 100 degrees Celsius, and nighttime temperatures can dip as far as minus 180 degrees Celsius. Solar panels can be used to power moon colonies during lunar day, however powering the colonies during a lunar night, which is equivalent to 14 Earth days, is an issue that needs to be solved. The moon's equator is tilted only slightly, by approximately 1.5 degrees to the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, its orbital motion is such, that some peaks near its poles are constantly facing the Sun, thereby making them peaks of eternal light. These areas will thus have near constant sunlight to power the moon colonies. Similar to the regions of eternal light, there are regions near the poles which are permanently in the dark. This is usually due to the peaks shadowing those regions from sunlight or deep craters where the sunlight simply does not reach. Having not received any sunlight for nearly 2 billion years, these permashadow regions are in excellent spots for water resources. India's Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft, using NASA's Minisar radar, found more than 40 craters containing water ice on the lunar north pole. It is estimated that there could be 100 billion kilograms of water ice in these regions. The water ice could potentially be harnessed to supply water for consumption in moon colonies. Since areas near the lunar poles are in constant sunlight or darkness, rotating farms with temperature control systems can be built, such that they are exposed to sunlight for half an Earth day, on and off. Other needs for the plants, like insects for pollination and radiation protection, can be provided manually. With such a system in place, even a quarter of a hectare of land can feed approximately 50 people, a good start for a small but permanent settlement on the moon. The moon lacking an atmosphere, means humans need to be protected from damaging solar radiation and cosmic rays. The moon is also constantly bombarded with tiny meteorites which can severely damage the habitats, as with no atmosphere, they aren't slowed down or burned up on their way. Building modules in the craters of the Permashado regions provides partial shielding from these problems. Furthermore, the habitat modules can be covered with lunar regolith mixed with some concrete forming materials. Another way of protecting habitats could be to create an electrostatic radiation shield. We will explore it in another episode. That's it for now, I hope you learned something new today. To join this journey, explore the subscribe button and hit it. Let's explore all at one spot, thank you.